man named David. Amen. The devil liked to roar. He liked to lie. Amen. I thought about Jesse. Amen. His daddy said, go down to the battle. Amen. And take an ephod. Amen. Thank God. Amen. Of this corn. Amen. And these ten loaves. Amen. And these take down to your brother. Amen. And these ten cheeses. Amen. Down to the captain of their thousands. Amen. And thank God he said, see how the battle be. Amen. And you know what David didn't ask? Well, Daddy, there's a battle down there. It might get hot. And they might take me. Amen. In the battle. Amen. The Bible said. Amen. He left those few sheep. Amen. In the hand of a keeper. Amen. He went down to the battle. Amen. Thank God. And there stood. Amen. A big giant. Amen. On the other side. Amen. I'm making all of his threats and his promises. Amen. He wanted to fight somebody. He didn't realize it. Amen. Who he's about to fight. Amen. The devil liked to holler at you and tell you to sit down. Amen. And shut up. Ain't nothing to you no way. You're too little. You're too small. You're too weak. Amen. You're too sick. Amen. But the Lord. Amen. Fight your battles. Amen. You ain't fighting alone. Amen. Jesus said, Amen. I'll never leave you. And I'll never forsake you. But I'll go with you. Amen. All the way. Amen. Even to the end of the world. Not fighting this battle alone. Amen. David wasn't fighting no battle alone. Amen. Doug, I thought about it. he did what the, his father told him to do, didn't he? Amen. You know what he was? Amen. I thought about he was about his father's business. Amen. We look at that in a natural, but I read about Jesus. Amen. In a spiritual. Amen. When Caesar Augusta sent out the decree. Amen. To tax all the world day. Amen. Thank God. Amen. Jesus. Amen. No doubt. Amen. Was just. Amen. Going to be born. Amen. Into this world. And Joseph and Mary. Amen. They went down there. Amen. To be taxed. Amen. They went down every year at the time of the Passover. Amen. They went down. Amen. They did according. Amen. To the law of Israel. Amen. And you know what? Amen. There was a son born and his name was Jesus. Amen. Jesus. Amen. And the star and the light began to shine out and them shepherds dug. Amen. They went to see this thing. Amen. Thank God. Amen. It happened. Amen. In Bethlehem of Judea. Amen. You know what? Jesus. He was born. Amen. Amen. And there was no room for him. Amen. In the end. Amen. But you know what? Amen. He's going to be the son of God. He might have been put out. He might not have had no room. Amen. For Jesus. Amen. Make room. Amen for the Lord of your life. I go somewhere with this in a minute because the Lord dealing with me too. Amen. Thank God today. Him shepherds seen him down there. Amen. Thank God they went to tell it. Amen. Jesus began to grow. Amen. His family. Amen. They seen these things. Amen. I thought about Doug when they went down. Amen. They took their family. Amen. They took Jesus. Amen. He was just a little feller. Amen. The Bible says he's about 12 years old. Amen. They got down there. Amen. During the Passover and the different things. Amen. It was time to go back home. And they loaded up the camp. Amen. They left him behind. Amen. Didn't know they left him behind. Make sure you don't leave him behind. And no, you didn't leave him behind. Amen. Because you're going to need. Amen. This man. Amen. Call Jesus. Don't leave him behind. Amen. Take him with you. Amen. You can't fight the battle. Amen. The battle's too hard. Amen. But with Jesus, Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. It's good to know we got a friend, ain't we? Amen. Jesus. Amen. About 12 years old, Doug. 
he, he found his way over into the temple there. Amen. He began to uh, talk to the people. And his mommy and daddy, they left, went a whole day's journey out uh, before they knew he was gone, uh, that he wasn't with them. And the Bible said they come back uh, and looked about three days, I believe. Uh, amen. Trying to find the Lord. Uh, trying to find their son. Uh, amen. Thank God. Uh, and when they found him, uh, amen, he was there. Uh, uh, we thank God with the smart people of that day. Uh, amen. The scribes and the lawyers and things. Uh, amen. He was hearing them. Uh, amen. He was answering them. Uh, and he was asking them questions. Uh, amen. Thank God his mommy and daddy. Uh, uh, when they found him there, uh, they said, Son, uh, uh, why deal us with us though? Uh, uh, this. Uh, he said, uh, He said, No, you're not. Uh, that we sought for thee. Uh, amen. Thank God. He said, How is it? Uh, amen. That you sought for me. Uh, uh, wished you not. Uh, uh, that I must be. Uh, amen. About my father's business. Uh, it's time we all uh, uh, get about the father uh, and his business. Amen. Uh, uh, God don't run no profit. Uh, organization does. Uh, uh, but his business uh, is to do with the souls uh, of the lost out there. Uh, amen. His business uh, is ways uh, of the father's ways. Uh, he was there. Uh, and he said, I must be about my father's business. What, what's that mean, preacher? Must be about my father's ways. These people's done this thing this way and that way and the other. I'm here to make it right. I'm here about the father of business. I'm here on business. I ain't on no pleasure joy ride trip. I'm here on business. Amen of the king. When you get in this pulpit, amen, you need to be in business. Amen for the king. Amen, not about my business. Not about some joke to tell. Not about some fishing trip. Amen, but about somebody. Amen. It can help us hold on. Amen. To the end. He said, I must be about my father's business. He wasn't there playing ping pong. He wasn't telling jokes. And he wasn't asking for their money. And he wasn't saying, now, if you'll do this, that, and the other, you can be this and that and the other. He's asking them some hard questions. And he was amazed at it. But the Bible said he was filled with the Spirit of God. And that was upon him. Hey, man, thank God. He said, I must be about my father's business. Hey, man, when I come to church, I'm about the father's business. Hey, man, when I go to work, I'm about the father's business. And when I walk out 24 hours a day wherever I am, hey, man, I need to be, hey, man, about the father's business. Hey, man, thank God he follows me. Hey, man, he lives within me. They asked him one time, hey, man, about the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven when the end would be. Hey, man, this kingdom and that. He said it don't come with observation. Uh, uh, but the kingdom is within you. Uh, amen. He said it's in here. Uh, amen. You got Jesus in here. Uh, amen. Every day. Uh, amen. The Bible said greater is he that's in you uh, than he that's in the world. Uh, amen. There ain't no joy. Uh, ain't no peace. Uh, amen. Out in the world. Uh, amen. There's joy in the Lord. Uh, amen. Isaiah said in that day shall they draw uh, uh, from the wells of salvation. Uh, and with joy uh, uh, shall they draw. Amen. If the Lord had gave you joy, where is it at today? We'll have joy. We'll have peace. I know the devil going to try you on every side and try to take your peace. But Jesus said the thief come not but for to steal, to kill, and destroy. Amen. He come to kill and destroy. Tell me what we got. Our peace, our joy. Well, you're not a good singer, Rick. You're not a good singer, Doug. A sister, brother, you don't know them words. I'll tell you one thing. I'll hum to the Lord. I'll praise him every how I can. And the devil will hate it just that much more. The devil, when he gets you knocked down, he wants you to go ahead and lay down. When he knocks you down, he wants you to go ahead and lay down. We need to get back up. Amen. A just man falls seven times, he rises back up. He's going to get back up because he knows his Redeemer liveth. 
The Bible said he persuaded that my Redeemer liveth. I'm glad I'm not serving no dead God. I'm serving a living God. Amen. When David got down there in the battle, got hot. Amen. He was about his father's business. Amen. He was down there. Amen. He said, what is this again? When they began to tell him. Amen. They said, bless. Amen. Look at this guy out here. Amen. This big giant of glass. Up a Goliath by name. Up from Gath. Amen. They began to say, amen. This and this shall be done. Out of the man that kills this big giant. Amen. Thank God. The king shall give him riches. Amen. His house. Amen. He's going to give him his daughter. Amen. The wife. Amen. His house. It's going to be free in Israel. And David said, what again? Going to do all this for what? You mean he's going to give all this just to kill him? You mean that's what? What did you say again? Amen. David had enough of the Lord about him. He knew that wasn't nothing but a thing. Amen. He said, you know what? Who is this uncircumcised? Amen. Philistine. That he did Amen. Who defies the armies. Amen. Of the living God. Amen. He knew God was with him. Do you know God's with you today? Do you know God is going to the battle with you? Did you know God fight your battle? Did you know God? Amen. Done won the victory. Amen. You just got to go. You just got to get up and go. If you sat there, I said over a thing about that song, Dan. I said, I'll forget half the words. Lord, Lord, sing it anyway. Sometimes you just got to get up and go. I read about 10 lepers in the Bible, Doug. And they, Jesus passed by on his way to Jerusalem. He stopped at that little village, that little town. And he seen those 10 lepers, 10 men that had leprosy. Amen. And they began to cry out to him. Hey, Amen. And he told them to go and show themselves to the priest. Say, man. And you know what happened? When they got up, they were all ten healed. Didn't leave three or four out. Couldn't do one or two. He healed them all. You know when he did that? When they got up. Bible said when they got up to do it. When they got up. And when that one had realized what had happened, he didn't, they didn't get down there yet. Got out of my seat back there one time to come pray. Lord, save me before I've got this out. You don't believe I ain't Bible. When you get up, God will meet you there. God will meet you. When you get up, do something for God. God will meet you there. Hey, Amen. And that one, he realized he was cleansed. And he turned around and fell down his feet and began to thank him and glorify God. And Jesus said, weren't they ten cleansed? Where's the nine? Go thy way. Thy faith that made you whole. Hey, Amen. You know what he done? He got up. We might be few, we might be many some days, but if we just get up and do what God have us do, I believe God will fight our battles. And I believe God, the Bible said the just walk by faith. Hey, Amen. We walk by faith and not by sight. Hey, Amen. Abraham, when he offered his son up, up in Mount Moriah, I believe, amen, Doug, and he took him up there. He took little Isaac up there. God told him to take him up there and offer him for a burnt offering. Hey, amen, I believe Abraham walked by faith and not by sight, believing even if the Lord did let him go through with it, that the Lord was able, amen, to raise him up even from the dead, the Bible said in Galatians. I believe that God's able to do all things, amen, and one day when we die, and one day death is coming, I believe, Tammy, that one day at the great trump of God, when the sound comes, amen, the dead in Christ are going to rise, amen, first, amen, and them that are alive and remain, amen, shall not prevent them. Amen. They're going to be, amen, called up to be with the Lord. Amen. In the air. Amen. In the clouds. Amen. Amen. Even when this life's over. Amen. The Bible said if we had hope only. Amen. In this life only. Amen. We will be all men. Amen. Most miserable. I'm looking for another place. Amen. I'm looking for a city. Amen. Who has foundations. Amen. And its builder. And its maker is God. It ain't made by man's hands. It's made by God. Amen. It's not going to rot. The shingle's not going to blow off. The tin's not going to rust. And the street's not going to need no repaving. It's a perfect place. We just got to get up and got to hold on. David got down to the battle, and the battle was hot. They were fighting. And his oldest brother alive, 
He said, what did you come down here for, David? I'm going to tell you something. What are you doing here, Jesus? What's not that we've been looking for you? What are you doing down here, David? Always oh, somebody going to ask you a question. Why are you doing what you're doing? What makes you think you can do this? Why are you here? Well, I'm here on the Father's business. I want to make heaven my home, and I want to see somebody else make it too. Hey, man, David just went along, turned right aside away from the, of the doubtful hearing. You got to turn your ear sometimes to the doubtfulness, and you got to look on to the Word of God. Uh, the Bible said we're more than conquerors. Uh, amen. Through Him. Uh, amen. We've been made heirs uh, and joint heirs with Christ. Uh, amen. We've got a home in heaven. Uh, uh, we don't need to forget that. Uh, amen. No matter how tired. Uh, amen. No matter how beat down. Uh, uh, no matter how much the devil rails on you, climbs you, and jumps you, and trips you, and pushes you around. Uh, amen. They're going to be hills. Uh, they're going to be valleys. Uh, they're going to be trials. Uh, amen. David, he looked on uh, and he looked what God could do, uh, uh, not what the giant could do. Uh, amen. He said this uncircumcised Philistine uh, is going to be like the lion and the bear. I believe he told Saul when Saul said, bring him down here. He said, I'll do it. Saul brought him down there. He said, you can't go out and fight him. He's a man of war from his youth. And you're just a little youth. You're just a lad. You're just a little young fella. You can't go out against him. And David said, a lion came in as I kept my father's sheep and his flock and a bear also. And he come out. He said, and when they took him, he said, I followed after him. He said, when he stopped and he withstood David, he said, he took him by the beard, Doug, and he slew him. He said, I slew him. And the Lord delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear. He said, this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them. It wasn't about how strong David was. It was he had power from God. Jesus said, go tarry ye in Jerusalem until you be what? Until you be endued from power from on high. Amen. Uh, amen. And let me tell you something. Uh, when you get saved, uh, amen, you need power from on high. Uh, amen. To ride this road uh, and walk this dusty hard road sometimes. Uh, amen. This road ain't easy. Uh, amen. There's bumps in the road. Uh, amen. There's rocks in the road. Uh, uh, David could have said, Lord, uh, amen, I'd like to do this because I really love you, uh, but he's awful big. Uh, amen. Look at his sword. Uh, look at his brass. Uh, look at his spear. Uh, amen. The Lord. Uh, uh, David neither uh, uh, had those ideals. Uh, only thing David thought about, uh, he defined, uh, amen, my God. Uh, amen. The God of Israel. Uh, amen. The God of Abraham. Uh, uh, the God of Isaac. Uh, and the God of Jacob. Uh, amen. How damn uh, if I David. Uh, I'll fight with him. Amen. You got to fight. Amen. Sometimes you got to step out. Amen. You got to step out in faith. Amen. And take the shield of faith and get to the battle. The battle's hot sometimes. It's hot. If it was easy, everybody would do it. The Bible talks about pressing our way into the kingdom of heaven got to press our way into it. It ain't easy, Doug. People believe you, have you to believe that it's just easy. And nothing ever, nothing ever stand in your way. And if it does, you're just not where you need to be. Well, that's false. Hey, Amen. There's a lot of things stood in Paul's way. There's a lot of things stood in Peter's way when they whipped Peter. And they chained him to four quadrant of soldiers. And they put him in a jail. And when they threw Paul and Silas in a jail and they laid many stripes on them, not a few on their backs, amen, it looked like it was a pleasant road of ease at that time. Amen, but about long come midnight, Doug, and they begin to sing praises unto their God. And the prisoners heard it. They wasn't just over humming them to themselves. They said, let's sing a little bit to the Lord. I believe they sang into the top of their lungs. Amen, and praise the Lord. Let me help you just a little. Amen, when you're in the middle of the trial, just lift up your hands and praise the Lord. Amen, because victory's on the other side. You're going through the trial. Amen, thank God. 
God today. Amen. Well, they show you be tried. Though it like fire. Amen. You'll come through. Let me tell you, you can come through as pure gold. Amen. You'll come through the trial if you'll look to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. He that has begun a good work in you, Paul said, would perform it until the day. He's going to perform it today. If he puts you on this road, you don't got to quit. You don't got to stop. You don't got to look back. I said over here a couple weeks ago, verse on my heart, Doug, Jesus said, remember Lot's wife. What happened to Lot's wife? There is no time to look back. Jesus said he has put his hand on the plow. He tells him not to look back. He tells him not worthy. Now, I understand what the Bible talks about. Now, I ain't going to get in that. I'll be up here for an hour trying to explain that because a lot of people say, well, then you back said you can't come back, and that's baloney. We won't get into that. I'm not into that today. But I'm here on the Father's business. That's what you're here for today. You're here on the Father's business. You wouldn't be here today if God didn't move in your heart to be here today. You wouldn't be here today and you wouldn't be saved. You wouldn't even be lost. You wouldn't even be alive if it weren't for the Father. David went out, didn't he? King Saul said, well, if you're going to do it, David, and you got to do it, here, take my armor. Here, take this armor. Well, Saul was a big man according to the Bible. He stood a head, shoulder higher above anybody in Israel. He was a tall man. That armor, no doubt I can see, Doug, the Bible don't talk much about what it did to David, but I can see it's big, didn't fit, it's bulky. It'd be like trying to put on somebody's big, heavy stuff, and, and, and you, you, the, the, the giant would have, would, have, would have looked at him and laughed at him some more. And David would have been in all kind of trouble, but David did it the Lord's way. Let me show you something here. That, that armor was a type of works. It was a type of protection. God wants you to protect it by faith. And that's what David showed right there. I don't need this. I got faith in God, what God's already did for me. Sometimes the, the, the devil will say, well, you need to go do this, and you'll go do that. And if y'all can't do that, y'all can't make it. Baloney. You trust in the Lord. You just trust in the Lord. Let all that other talk just go over your head. You're saved by grace through faith. You're saved by grace through faith. I said, you're saved by grace through faith. That's what you're saved by. You're saved by grace through faith, and that not of yourselves, it's a gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. You're saved by grace through faith. Not through some other something. Well, you need to go try this, Tammy. You need to go join yourself to this club. They're real smart, and maybe they can help you along the way. You're saved by grace through faith. Faith in what? A risen Savior. I got faith, Doug, that he's alive. He's alive forevermore. And he's making intercession for me. Not just for my sins and my thoughts and fears, but he's making provisions for my food and my clothes and my bills and my health and my strength and for my family and for the church and for wisdom and for knowledge and for every good thing. All good things, James said, had come down from the Father of lights. And whom no variableness, neither shadow of turning in him. The giants of this world would like you to get about your business and about the devil's business. But I say we need to be what Jesus said. He said, I wish you sought for me. You what you not that I know. Nope. I'm about the Father's business. I've come for this reason, and that's what I'm going to do. He wasn't disrespectful to his parents. He knew the law and he lived the law to the letter. But he just had the question. He wasn't smart or hateful and he went along with his family when they left. He didn't rebuke them or do nothing off the wall. I'm not saying none of that. But he asked a question. You sought me, but I must be about my father's business. This is what I have came for, Mom. This is what I came for. If you back up some, you'll, you'll read about Simeon and, and the Lord saying he wasn't going to die, Dad, until he's seen it, until he's seen the salvation of the Lord. And he said, let thy servant depart in peace when he's seen him. And he said, there he is, when they went down to circumcise him on the eighth day. Let me tell you something. God knows where you're at today. 
God needs a soldier. God needs soldiers. People say, well, God don't need nothing. No, he'll make it just fine without me or you. But he likes to bless you. When you do something for the Lord, I sat up here and forgot half the words that song, and I got just as good a blessing as I've got over sitting all day. And that'll be just fine. Because you know what? If you let your pride get in the way, you'll go sit down and say, well, I ain't probably think bad about me. Well, your pride will get you in trouble. Just obedient to the Lord. It's all right. I ain't never seen the Lord laugh at nobody. I ain't never seen the Lord tell somebody, just go sit down, you can't sing it, so. Never heard the Lord say, Rick, you can't preach that message. You can't, you can't do it. You can't remember. You ain't good enough. The Lord's always encouraged me. Amen. I've always been encouraged by the Lord. And later in David's life, when, when they came and they took all of his family, all his goods, and they did run away with them, they wanted to come and they wanted to stone David. He was a leader. And David began to pray. Doug, the Bible said, and he encouraged himself in the Lord. Sometimes when you don't have a phone call to call in to encourage you, sometimes when you don't have somebody to meet you on the street and encourage you, maybe sometimes you're all alone in the hospital, nobody even knows you're sick, encourage yourself in the Lord. Look at what God has done before. I thought when you read the book of Hebrews and you read the, the faith chapter, they call it the 11th chapter, you'll read about all these people that had faith. And they just went strong for the Lord. Whether it be Moses or, or Joseph. You know, I thought about Joseph this morning, Daddy. Uh, uh, Joseph no doubt went down and his father loved him. He loved him. The Bible said he loved him more than all of them because he was the son of his youth. That's what the Bible says. I ain't going to get into that, but that's what it says. And it made him a coat of many colors. And Joseph, being about 17 years old, he dreamed a dream and and Doug, he began to tell his brothers about the dream. He had Reuben and Sibian, Levi and all of them and Judah. He began to tell them, I had this dream. And my shoes rose up and, and the other ones, they made obedience to it. And they said, shall we bow down to you? Is that what this is? Shall we bow down to you? And then he had another dream, Mom. And he said he seen the sun and the moon and them. And they all bowed down to the sheath. And he told it to him. And he told it to his father. And his father kind of rebuked him. He said, shall we do this thing? Me and your mom? Shall we all do this? You know, sometimes when, you, when God gives you a dream, you can't help what you dream. God give it to him for a reason. And if God gives you something, that's fine. Because God gives it to you. Make sure God's giving it to you. But I thought about if they could have only said, well, you know what? What does this really mean? We could maybe help him in this. But his brother instead was jealous over him. And they thought to destroy him and get rid of him and then see what becomes of this dreamer. And they sold him down into Egypt. The Ishmaelites came along and the Midianites people and they sold him and they sold him into the house of Potiphar, an officer of the guard and of, of, of Pharaoh. And they sold him down there and there he was. And you know what he done when he got down there? He was about the father's business. That's where he stayed. He stayed about the father's business. Sometimes our eye will get away if we ain't careful. And I won't hold you long. I may be preachers preach. I don't get ahead of nobody. But if we turn our head to the left or to the right because other people say, what are you doing here, Doug? You need to go this way. What are you doing over at that church? They do it different. You, you need to go this way. We need to, our order. The Bible said the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Amen. The Lord will lead your footsteps. He'll lead your path, and he'll light it. He said he would. He was a lamp and a light to it. He'll light it so they that walk ain't walking in the night. They're walking in the day. They got light. God lights people. He tells them where to go. I said all I have to say this. The devil will try to turn you the wrong way and get you to go the other way. And when you're on the wrong road, you can't be about the Father's business because at that time you're either about whoever turned you down that road's business or you're about your own business. 
When you get saved, the Bible said you're bought with a price. You're no longer your own. People said, it's my life. I'll do it my way. Well, how dare any Christian ever spit that out of their mouth once they've been bought by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. You are no longer your own. The Bible said you are bought with a price, the precious blood of Jesus Christ. You are bought. You're no longer. This ain't, just, Doug, this ain't my life. Paul said, it's not me that lives this life, but Christ living in me. I'm no, it's no more my life no more. It's not my own no more. I traded my old dead, sinful, lusting, filthy, nasty, no good for nothing life for a life of good, a life of the Lord. I'm not making this up. We take off, Doug sings that song, we take off the old coat and we put on the new. And when we get saved, he puts a new song in our mouth, even a song of praise. He puts a song and we'll praise to the Lord, not praise to something else. Who is your Lord today? Are you about your father's business today? Yeah. Didn't know I'd get up and preach. Didn't know I'd get up and say that, but I'm not going to take it back. I'm going to obey the Lord. Yeah. Been on my heart, Doug, about the father's business for a day or two. Didn't know where I'd go with none of that. But you know what? When you just get up, like I said, well, go. God send you where he wants you to go with it. Yeah. Or he'll tell you to sit down and be quiet. Yeah. But you know what? He didn't saw nobody's log out none of them when they walked out there on the limb. You know, David put all that armor off. He said, I can't take these. He said, he couldn't have say to go, Doug. He said, I've not proved these. I don't know if this will work or not. He said, but I know God will work. And he put that off of him, and he went out there to meet that giant. He said, he hastened out there. said, he went down to the brook, and he got him five smooth stones, and he put them in his shepherd's bag, and he had his sling in his hand. He was ready, wasn't he? Have your sling in your hand. Keep it there. He had it in his hand. You read that. He had it in his hand. He didn't have it in his back. Some work get hung up. Didn't say, so let me go get it from one of these people that I can't trust or I wish I could trust because your friends will let you down. He had it. His life was in his hand, and he had it in his hand. And he had God right here in his heart. He had what he needed, didn't he? He had God, and he had the means to defeat him. And that giant made fun of him. I'm telling you, people are going to make fun of you. They're going to enjoy every minute of seeing you trip and fall. And that's a shame. But it's true. But David hastened to meet him, Doug. And he reached in that bag, and you've read it, you've heard it many times, but I'm going to say it again. He got him one of them stones, and he put it in that sling, and he gave it a sling. And when he let that thing go, it hit the giant right in his forehead. And it sunk. It sunk. And the Bible said he fell right on his face. He fell right face down on his face. And David run up on him, Doug. He didn't wait around all day. He said, you know what? What they'll do, do quickly. Let's get this done over with right here. Yeah. He run up on him, and he didn't have a sword. He took his sword out of his sheath, and he cut off his head. That's how you kill serpents. You cut their heads off. Smashed their heads off. And the enemy, he would like to cut your head off. The enemy would like for you to stall, wait around to somebody do something to you. When God tells you to do something, you move right then. Yeah. Right. David hastened to go to him. He felt that. You ever just felt that upon you? I felt it upon me. And I wanted to sing. I wanted to preach. That's when I felt it. And there's times that I didn't feel it. I believe he felt that. I believe he felt that from the head to the toe. I believe he felt that. There's something you can feel in this today. You may not believe that. There's something you can feel today in this. You can feel it. You can feel it moving on you. And it'll, it'll move you. You can sit there in the Bible. Wouldn't have said quench not the spirit if it weren't so. In one place he said quench not the spirit. Don't hold to your seat when God's saying get up preach, get up sing, get up testify, or go pray for brother so-and-so, go pray for sister so-and-so, or go up there and sing that song. Get up there and testify what God's done for you. The devil's going to immediately tell you they're going to laugh at you. They don't want to hear it. But God's people do want to hear it. Because, you know, I may be up here preaching, but you don't know I got a lot of trials and valleys too. I got a lot of hurtful things, and I like to hear something God did for you to lift me up, get me through my trial. The Lord ain't going to let you down. David was still standing at the end of the battle. He was still standing, and you know what? 
Saul asked Abner, he said, Abner, whose son is this? Who's his father? Who, who is this? Who is this strapping this lad? Who is this man? Well, who's his father's house? He said, I, I can't tell. I don't know. And he sent Abner to inquire him. Abner brought him back. And I still don't know to this day, maybe you do, but he had the head of the giant in his hand, carrying it around with him. But he had it. And he said, who are you? He said, I'm from the house of Jesse, my father's house. And uh, I thought about it. He still honored his father, didn't he? He didn't say, well, I'm from one tribe down here. I'm from where. He said, I'm from Jesse's house. Proud of his father. I need to be proud of her father. A lot of people on the job say, Well, you you you're a Christian? You're, yeah, well, I go to church. And, yes, sir, I am, and I serve Jesus. Yes, I am. Are you? Because if you ain't, I'd like to help you. Don't be ashamed of the Lord. Don't be ashamed of the Lord. It's hard sometimes. They four or five people, it's kind of like peer pressure. You're little, they'll get the, and then you get around your lunch bucket or something, they'll start telling everything under the sun, and, and you got to get up and get away from that, or you'll make it just us bother you. Yeah. I used to be like that dog. I'd be in, be in places, and I got saved, and, and they'd be telling filthy jokes, doing this and that and other, and I'm like, I can't take this, and I'm sure not going to sit here and laugh along with you. i got to get away from this. It bothers me. Yeah. Like, look at him. He thinks he's better than us. No, I don't think I'm better than you, but I'm not taking part in your evil deeds. I can't be a light to you. That's when your light comes on when you turn around and walk away. You don't got to say a word to them. You don't got to cuss them out. You don't got to be mean to them. You don't got to sit there and make fun of them. Just say, boys, I, I love y'all, but I, I'm going to walk on up through here. You don't have to say anything. Yeah. And if you want to say something, Lord moves on you, by all means, you say it. Yeah. Say, I'm a Christian. And I used to be the same way. So I handled that a lot of times. Mama said, boys, I understand what y'all doing. I used to be the same way, but I can't do that anymore. I love you. I'll do anything for you. I can't do that anymore. Yeah. That troubles my heart. My father ain't, ain't well pleased with that. And I need to be about his business. And uh, when I go to church on Sunday or Wednesday or Thursday or whenever I get back in church, I can't just go to church. I'd have been telling your filthy jokes and taking part with them. Because yeah. I'll get up here and want the anointing of God. And guess what? It might just not be here. God's called us unto holiness. That's not a denomination. That's just what he's called us to. He's called us under righteousness. He's called us to be good. There's good, righteous Baptists, uh, Presbyterian probably, Methodists. You go down the line, holiness, whatever. I'm not into denominations. I could care less about denomination. My Bible said the Holy Bible on the front of it, and that's just what it is. They say, what kind of preacher are you? They asked me that. What kind of preacher are you, Doug? I said, well, my Bible says the Holy Bible. Yours says it right there on it. I said, I guess I'm a holy preacher. I preach what it's in this Bible. It says the Holy Bible on it. So that's what I am. I'm going to preach holy. And that's what we got to do. Yeah. We're supposed to live it, supposed to walk it. And when we fail, the devil's going to beat you. When you fail, that's when he wants you down here on your knees when you're the weakest to keep to give you a little push on over. It's not a disgrace to fail. It's not a disgrace to fall. It's a disgrace to stay down. The devil wants to talk to you, tell you you can't do it. Look, you wouldn't have failed in the first place. If you get back up, you're just going to fail again. You know what Jesus said? He said, if your brother uh, fell against you, Doug, seven times in a day and turn seven times in a day and repent and, say, and ask you to forgive, you to forgive him. Right. Now, if Jesus said that, that we were supposed to do that, right. wouldn't the Father do that? Right. He said, if he turns seven times in a day and repent, you're to forgive him. Right. So if you fail, don't think that's the end of your road. If you fail three times, don't think that's the end of your road. I don't mean that, well, we got a license to sin. We can do whatever we want. We can fail a hundred. And God said, that's okay. That ain't what God's talking about. He knows your heart. But sometimes we struggle and sometimes we give in to them pressure. Sometimes we hear too much. Sometimes we say too much. Sometimes somebody will be talking and my flesh wants to jump in, Doug, because I know a little bit about the subject and I'll get in and I'll overstate what I should have said. What do you mean? Well, sometimes we say things we should have just kept our mouth shut. Sometimes we get a phone call and somebody will get to talking. If we ain't careful, we'll get to talking and we'll co-sign a bunch of stuff on somebody we should have left alone. Amen. Sometimes it's easier to talk than it is to be quiet. Yeah. We got two ears, Dad said, and one mouth for a reason. We need to hear twice as much. Right. I believe the Bible said in James, be swift to hear. So yeah. And if we're swift to hear and slow to speak and slow to wrath, and we're hearing a lot more than we're saying. Just because we know something on somebody don't mean we need to tell it. 
I might know something on you. It might hurt you. You might have done what and asked the Lord to forgive you. Who am I? Who am I to keep that, keep that going? You might ask the Lord to forgive you, and that's done gone. We need to stop. If it gets to us, then we need to break that chain. When it gets to us, we need to stop. Don't want to get off on something bad here, but I believe we could help people by more by just not saying nothing and saying, Lord, bless my brother, bless my sister. And some people ain't as grown as others. Some people don't know things. Doug, some people, they don't know. They ain't got that far yet, and we might be further. They might be further than us. So we're supposed to love one another as God loved us. We're supposed to love one another. And I believe we can do that. I believe we need to be about the Father's business. I believe the first opportunity Jesus got, he went right in there and got started. I won't tell you today. God give you something to do, jump right in there, don't wait on it. I'm talking to somebody today. If God give you something to do, don't question it, don't wait on it, just do it. If you know God give it to you, just do it. Just do what God have you do, you'll be a lot happier. It's kind of like, I don't know, maybe it's somebody lost the Lord dealing with them and said, you need to pray. And you're like, well, maybe one day it's you might as well just go ahead and say, I'm coming. Because you'll be the most miserable soul, the most miserable person, until you finally just get to the place you said, you mean I, it's kind of like some kind of dentist appointment or some kind of something you're dreading and you're dreading and you're dreading. And I've been to them and they fixed me up and I'm like, I feel a whole lot better now. Tooth was killing me, but I went down and they gave me a feel and they did something for me. I wish I'd have went three weeks ago. It's kind of like that when you get aggravated and agitated and you don't know what to do and the Lord's dealing with you and you're miserable and, you, and your family seems like they're against you. and everybody. No, you need to give in to God. Let me tell you something. We ain't getting no younger. And time is only going to go so far. And I'm going to close. Maybe one of these preachers want to preach. Daddy, you want to preach? Doug, you want to preach? I don't know if these brothers back here. Maybe can you like to preach? Somebody say something. But I want to say this. Time's winding up. And we ain't getting no younger, I ain't. And we ain't got no promise of tomorrow. And if we ain't ready, we need to be ready. And if we ain't ready, we need to be ready. And there's only one way to get ready, Doug. And that's praying. Now, don't, you know, if you're lost, ask the Lord to forgive you, and you come and you make a covenant with God. That's what you do. You ask God to forgive you. A lot of people don't know this. Well, I don't even know what I'd ask. We ask the Lord to forgive you of all your sins and trust him and believe him that he took them for you and he'll do that. He'll do that. Amen. He'll do exactly that. Amen. He won't ask you no questions. Doug, he won't ask you no fill out no applications. He don't ask you no questions. He just come as you are. He's a great God, ain't he? He's a good God, ain't he? He's a good God because he don't saw you out, walk you out on a limb and then saw it off and let you fall. I believe with all my heart if a person sincerely comes to an altar, Daddy, with their heart broken and wanting to be saved, he'll save them. And they'll feel something new inside their heart. There's something new inside your heart that'll come in. And I thought about all the times that David, Doug, no doubt, had to fall back on what God had done for him in the past. How many times have we seen God do something, Tammy, and then we had to fall back on that to rely on strength for tomorrow? Strength of yesterday, what God's done for you, will build you stronger. It's like going to a gym and working out what you did yesterday will help you today. So you need to do something today so you'll have something tomorrow to come back to. If we go to church today and, 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 and we sing a song, I failed today. I failed. I forgot how I that song. I ain't going to stand here and act like I did. And I forgot how I felt, but I love the Lord, and I'm going to sing for the Lord. And you know what? I'll come back next week more prepared, and I'll try to sing it again the week after whenever he lays it on my heart again. It might be a month. He may never do it. But if he does, I'll try it again. When you fall or you fail, it ain't a failure to make, uh, forget a song. But sometimes we fail in other ways, and we just fail, and we just got to get up and go on. God still loves you. It's good to see everyone of y'all today. Good to see everybody. Hope we don't bore you. Don't want to. Maybe one of your brothers got to say something. You know, say something. I'll close. Open the altar up. Maybe somebody pray. Okay. You got something you want to preach for me? I'd like to say this. We're glad to have everyone of you and love to see the little children here. Love to see children in the house of the Lord. Love to see them. I hate to see Brother Steve left a little early. Pray for him. I thought about Doug this week, and I'll close. I thought about that brother you was talking about that went over there. 
and uh, Whitney, yeah, his boy, been on my heart for several days. That little boy's got sugar real bad, and I like for everybody to remember him today. He's been on my heart for three or four days. Just wept, cry, coming home the other day, Daddy praying for him. The little fella, no doubt, don't know why he can't eat what everybody else can't eat. Maybe looks around, don't know why he can't do the things other little fellas do. And he comes and he goes to church. So I'm a little fella and I thought about praying for his mom and daddy. It's got to be hard on look down there, kid sick. If you've got a kid that's sick or somebody's sick, I know how you feel for as that goes. We've had sick kids. My little boy was in children's hospital, dug for two or three weeks when he was first born. And boy, it takes take something out of your heart. It makes your heart heavy. But to have one that's living with something that's just ongoing and you just can't wait to see the help come. And maybe that's why that song was on my heart. Help is on the way. Help is on the way. But if we give up today, it won't come. We can't, we can't quit. Don't quit. Don't even think about quitting. They sang that song, Brother Melvin used to sing that song. Bless his soul. Too many miles behind me. Too many trials dug her through. Too many teardrops. There's too many problems and too many things we've done faced to quit now. We've come too far. You know what? I look around. I don't know everybody here. Familiar faces to me today. I love every one of y'all. I love every one of you. I got a heart of love for God's people and sinner people. I love you today. Hope you come back. Want them to come back today. I feel bad. I can't play a guitar very much. I'm just learning. Don't want to mess somebody else up while they're singing. But bless your soul today for something doing something for God today. We can't worry about what everybody else thinks about us. If we forget or we mess up or we do something, I stand at the head of the list. I'm not a good musician. I'm not a good singer. Don't claim to be a great preacher, Doug. But I'm here by the grace of God. I am what I am. And you know what? If we'll just get hand to hand and heart to heart, we'll get somewhere with God. God's good today, ain't he? What time he plays and y'all sing? We'll open the altar. Maybe you got a need today. Maybe you got a bill. Maybe you got a sickness. Maybe you got a family member. We like to open the altar. It's always open. Sometimes we're not like everybody else. Sometimes, Doug, we don't even open the Bible. We just preach. We read it a lot during the week and we think about it. We meditate on it. Sometimes it's just that way. It just, God gives us what He wants us to say and we like to be quiet. But I beg of you today, if you got a need, don't take it home with you. We'll pray with you. Family, sickness, whatever it might be. We've got a lot of people. I know people in the nursing home today that like to be here, and they can't be here. We appreciate y'all today. Praise the Lord. What are they saying?
me 